must be aware that there are some cities in Ontario that are approving garden suites or additional residential suites. So what is an additional residential unit? Why are these being permitted? And what are the requirements? That is what we are going to discuss in this video, so stay tuned. Hello, this is Sonia, your local realtor with Remax Realty Specialist. Welcome to my channel where we love talking about real estate and all things in and about Greater Toronto Area. So first of all, why are additional residential units or the garden suites being permitted? The province of Ontario has introduced Bill 108, More Homes, More Choices Act 2019 to expand the options municipalities have for providing a wide range of affordable housing in their communities and increase housing stock to address Ontario's housing crisis. To comply with Bill 108, municipalities are required to amend their policies to permit additional residential units within an accessory structure on the same lot as detached, semi-detached or townhouse dwelling. So what exactly is an additional residential unit? An additional residential unit or ARU is a self-contained residential dwelling unit with its own cooking facility, sanitary facility and sleeping area and that is located either within a single detached, semi-detached or townhouse dwelling. Additional residential units are also known as secondary units, garden suites, granny flats, in-law suites, laneway suites or coach houses. A maximum of one second unit and one garden suite or additional residential unit is permitted per residential lot and it must be located on a lot that contains a single detached, semi-detached or townhouse dwelling. In this video, I'm going to discuss the requirements by city of Brampton. Every city will have their own requirements and some of the cities have not even approved additional residential units or garden suites as yet. So sheds and detached garages may be converted into a form of garden suite subject to meeting zoning requirements and the Ontario Building Code. Any conversion of structure to a garden suite requires the same application process and fees. And here are the general provisions for the additional residential units. First of all, unit type. Detached, semi-detached or townhouse dwelling. Next is parking. One additional parking space for lots that contain two additional residential unit. No parking space required when only a second unit, which is a basement apartment or a garden suite is proposed. And now let's talk about the provisions for the garden suites. It can be on the rear or side yard only. Maximum size for the additional residential unit can be 80 square meter, which converts to 861 square feet for hamlet, estate, or agriculture zoning. 35 square meter or 370 square feet for all other residential areas. And the setbacks are as following. 2.5 meter or 8.2 feet from rear yard. 1.8 meters or 5.90 feet from side yard, 3 meters or 9.8 meters from the principal dwelling. And the height for the additional residential unit is going to be the lesser of the height of the principal dwelling or 7.5 meters, which is 24.6 feet for hamlet, estate or agriculture zones. 4.5 meters or 14.76 for all other residential zones. A 1.2 meter or 3.93 feet pedestrian path to the main access of the garden suite. And there cannot be any balconies or rooftop patios for these additional residential units. And now I'm going to talk about some of the regulations. Can your property accommodate a garden suite based on zoning requirements, building setbacks, lot setbacks, etc.? Does your property have fuel municipal services available? Can you extend your existing lines to service the garden suite? Do you need to upgrade your water services? Do you have buried cables, pipes, and wires on your property? Contact utility companies like hydro, gas, water separately and early in the process to set up services for the new unit. Is the property listed or designated under the Ontario Heritage Act? 
a heritage permit may be required. Is the property located within the floodplain or located within the Credit Valley Conservation Area or Toronto Regional Conservation Area? A permit may be required. Have you retained the services of a professional architect or engineer to prepare a site plan, building animations, floor plans, and roof plans? Have you acquired a legal survey of the property? You need to make sure your builder or the contractor is licensed by the Home Construction Regulatory Authority, which we call HCRA. Before you build a garden suite in Brampton, you will need to follow this process. Number one is preliminary zoning review. Number two, custom home review, zoning, urban design, engineering application fee, which is $200 and securities are $5,000. Number three, registration and registration fee, which is again $200. Building permit and associates fee, cost varies. Building inspections, occupancy and associates fee. Complete final registration. Education development charges and cash in lieu of parkland dedication is collected prior to building permit is issued. The city collects EDCs on behalf of the school boards based on the EDC rate at the time of building permit is issued. Cash in lieu of parkland dedication is calculated based on land value. Builders contractors would need to be licensed by the Home Construction Regulatory Authority. Tarion, the consumer protection organization established to administer the province new home warranty program, considers garden suites as new dwellings and must be enrolled with Tarion. And now the question arises, will constructing a new residential unit increase my property tax? Many factors affect the value of a home, including location, floor areas, lot size, quality of construction, number of bathrooms, etc. Information regarding the building permit for the additional residential unit will be forwarded by the city to the Municipal Property Assessment Corporation and PAC, which may result in a revised assessment value of the property and increase in the property taxes. The revised assessment will depend on the size of the additional residential unit, materials used, location of the property, etc. And if you're looking for additional income or you're an investor, Additional residential units are a great source of income, but you need a big hefty investment on top as well. Thanks for watching and don't forget to join me next week. Until then, stay happy and stay safe.